Hi ladies, so today I want to talk about the significance of numbers and I'm not just talking about the book of numbers although that is very significant as well. I'm actually talking about numbers. So the number three for example is significant. That's why Esther fasts for three days. The Jews expected God to act after three days. Jesus is risen from the dead after three days. Another number, for example, is the number seven. It's significant as well. It often refers to completion or perfection. The earth was created in six days and God rested on the seventh day and made it holy. He commands for us to rest and keep the seventh day holy as well. Seven feasts, seven letters to seven churches, seven lampstands. We see the number seven all over the book of Revelation. The year of Jubilee was the seventh year. Mary Magdalene had seven demons taken out of her. Could have been literal or metaphorical as a sign of complete healing. I remember starting a new job at the beginning of this year and I was watching this Netflix show called Maid and it was about a single mom and on the screen it showed her diminishing finances whenever she went to go and buy groceries. And I just felt so relatable with that because this new job that I had taken was a lot less pay than I had before. And I still had the same amount of bills and maybe a little bit more. And I was just concerned about how God was going to provide. And I'll never forget my first paycheck of the new year. The amount was 777 <laughs> Just such an odd amount for a paycheck, but in that moment, I just felt like God was telling me my expenses were going to be completely provided for, and it just really just gave me so much comfort. Another time when I was also worried about finances and maybe not being able to save enough money, I went online, randomly checked my account, and I had a checking and a savings account, and at this exact moment, the accounts matched almost perfectly except for two cents and it was it was an odd number too it wasn't an even whole number in both accounts and it was just it struck me because maybe with the overdrafts or me or the one cent entrance I just couldn't understand how they could be so close in number in match and it was only two two cents difference and there was two cents more in my savings account and you think two cents what's the meaning and significance of that but two cents is the widow's might and she gave it it was all she had and she gave it all and I just kind of felt like okay God's gonna give me the widow's might you know and my savings and it just gave me so much comfort knowing that he's got me and he's in control of even my finances and my savings another significant number is 40 40 often refers to new beginning or new birth or change. For 40 years, the Israelites wandered in the desert. The spies spied out the land for 40 days. Several kings and judges reigned for 40 years. Jesus was tested in the wilderness for 40 days. And after 40 days, he comes out stronger than ever with the Beatitudes supposedly on his lips. That's his first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. Isn't that beautiful? I just turned 40 this year and it just feels very significant to me. And last year I felt God really put in my heart to go, that I was gonna go to Israel and, and study him in the place where Jesus walked. I got my passport and I would go on walks with God. Listen to that song, Promised Land over and over by Toby Mac and my word for this year 2022 is promised land I stood on that promise that God would take me even though I didn't know exactly how it would work out with COVID still going on there were just a lot of unknowns but everything came together and a couple of weeks ago I got back from Israel God provided the day my mom actually booked the trip the evening of that day, I was sitting there in Bible study um, and we were studying this book, How Much More by Lisa Harper. It's a great study. I highly recommend it. And in her video that evening, she described going to Israel when she turned 40 and 
going to the wailing wall and praying to God about having him restore her love life and giving her a family. And um, being single, I can just totally relate to that. And then she spoke of 19 years later, going back to Israel, going back to that wailing wall with her adopted daughter in tow and placing another prayer in a wall. And this time all it said was two words, thank you. He answered her prayer and it was just so beautiful and it just totally changed the direction and why I wanted to go to Israel and and just pray about my life. It was really um, sweet timing that God lined up for me. And uh, I just want to share a passage with you, John 21, 1 through 14. Jesus appears to the seven disciples. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in a way in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you not have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat. You will find some. So they cast it, and they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put a, on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and he threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out, on the land they saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast now. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so wished with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Isn't that a cool story? I love it. 153 the uh, fish that they caught. It says a specific number. It's so cool. And here we see the disciples, they had left Jesus when he was arrested and, and being crucified. And what do they do? They just feel like failures after deserting him at the moment when he needed them the most. They go back to their old job, their old ways. They just gave up. Jesus finds them in this. And isn't it ironic? <laughs> they haven't caught any fish, even being fishermen, and this was their job, but they just hadn't caught any. And it isn't until Jesus comes on the scene and tells them to try the other side of the boat that they catch so many fish, their net doesn't break. They pull it in, and it's 153. The same number that zoologists had said was the number of species of fish. Also believe the number of nations at the time and also possibly the number of people that Jesus personally blessed. Coincidence? I don't know. And here God is saying, you will be fishers of men. You will catch so many of them, one of every tribe, every nation, your net is not going to break. And he goes on to restore Peter's relationship with him, and he invites the disciples to take fellowship and with a barbecue of fish and bread. It's just such a beautiful story, and I hope it encourages you all. Be blessed. <music>